try so hard to be different So stuck in your own head You say you can't comprehend anything less He says I'm not good enough, not good Hello, welcome back to my channel If you're new here, my name is Angel Baby Kyra Make sure you like and subscribe Go follow me on Instagram and TikTok So before we get started in today's video I had a burp I want to say that I do have affiliate links Incoming for the holidays I'm partnering with Inkbox and Parfait Andre Official So those will be linked in the description If you guys want to save some money I believe it's 20% off When you use my code Angel Baby Kyra at checkout So there is that If you want to help me out with this channel Because I'm still waiting to get monetized and trying to get my watch hours up so there's that also go follow me on instagram um, that will be in the description please go let me get to 8,000 and follow me on tiktok i try to do a lot of more commentary stuff on there so today's video i didn't know like what to title it but a lot of people have been commenting on the last video that i made about nick is not green and a lot of things have like happened not like a lot but like some things have happened obviously which is nick is not green has responded to the situation and the criticism that he has been getting for his response to the super mega situation but i was really confused because i was watching everyone else talk about it but then i couldn't find the original video because he actually unlisted it and i just have been watching like other people talk about it and i know a lot of people wanted me to continue to talk about it which i don't really know what else there is to say i feel like watching his video which i'll put it in the description because someone else uploaded it i was trying to watch it but he basically just goes over the whole thing about how he shouldn't have brought up personal things into the situation when his purpose that he said for the video was to amplify Lex's voice about her SA. Since then, there has been a narrative pushed by fans of Super Mega, other YouTubers, and Super Mega themselves that has fully embraced the conspiracy that there was an organized attempt to cancel Super Mega and that I am one of the main people behind this attack. I want to be as straightforward as I can be here. You can look at my comments across social media on Instagram and YouTube to see the direct claims being made about me. And I also invite you to watch videos that are popularizing online about my role in this situation so you can come to your own unbiased conclusion. I made an effort to lessen the amount of harassment that was coming towards me and people around me from these videos, but I have not blocked any words. I have not suppressed anything in the comments of these videos. And you are free to comment whatever you want. It is it is anarchy down there and of course it just really makes it harder for people who have been through sa because it gives them kind of a bad look too especially with lex's situation because like completely just diminished the purpose of the video you know to actually talk about what happened but instead of really talking about what happened he chose to bring in his own kind of vendettas into the situation which i do think he said that he handled poorly and as someone who is accused of a b and c is as such in this situation nick has every right to respond to clap back at it and to basically defend himself so I'm not really sure why some people are like oh why is he even responding of course he's going to respond like if these rumors and allegations about you being a bad person i'm sure that you don't want that to be getting around and i just think that i don't understand why people are getting mad at him for responding to that kind of thing and i feel like a lot of people that commented on my video are also saying that like his content really rubbed them the wrong way especially recently and he even recognizes it in his videos that he started to do more tiktok drama videos which have been like kind of like daily uploads something that's like very quick and easy for him to get out another video listen guys i i don't want to be branded as this like tiktok t commentary youtuber who like covers unnecessary drama and like feeds into it but on the other hand i i like playing into it like i i enjoy doing this unironically so more of like quantity instead of quality which is something that a lot of youtubers also try to do just for the sake of the algorithm and also he was he also has said that he wanted to like get it out get out his videos first not really explicitly saying why he wanted his videos to get out first on topics without like thoroughly researching it or thoroughly checking facts and having enough i don't know evidence or just a very clear understanding of whatever 
the situation is and just getting it out there and i feel like a lot of youtubers myself included do this because once a situation isn't really trending anymore and i know that's like a horrible thing to say because sa allegations should not be a trending topic at all but that's just how the youtube beer is especially with smear campaigns hit pieces which is what a lot of people have been saying that nick's um initial super mega video was was a hit piece and also i think that a lot of people are focusing on nick but then also not realizing that ethan also plays a very big part in the situation because he also literally had a stream that was like literally basking in the glory of the downfall of super mega and like seeing them like lose subscribers having the live subscriber count and having his like audience also just like unfollow and then also just be involved in this like kind of attack of super mega i am not a super mega fan didn't know who they were till the situation came out the only reason why i knew about it was because nick addressed it in a video and i didn't really think much about the situation like i said in my last video i don't think either parties are genuinely good people so to speak and i feel like as internet users i feel like you guys really need to understand that a lot of people who do these kinds of things are probably you know wanting fame money etc that's just kind of the whole youtuber like identity you know it was to make a living from these things and i feel like the easiest thing for for nick to do was to do these kinds of tiktok dramas where he became like a lot of people have said that he's became like overly negative and stuff but again i feel like a lot of people like to feed into the negativity of bashing other people because it's just fun to hate on people it's just fun to be negative because it makes you feel good of like bashing this person a lot of people said that they usually just watch nick and agree with nick because he is usually bullying people who deserve it and a lot of the times it's given with like a grain of salt of how solid his actual like research is pertaining to whatever individual situation that he's talking about and a lot of people like take it that nick did the video in good faith and a, B, and C are the reasons why we should not be liking whoever he's talking about. I think that Ethan and Nick obviously are kind of like the same. They kind of have the same kind of content. And I feel like a lot of like leftist commentators have the same kind of sticks, the same kind of deal and things like that. And I don't think like it's necessarily a bad thing. It can get repetitive and it can get boring, especially just the kind of content that he pushes out. Like obviously things aren't always going to be for people and i guess like that's just nick growing as a youtuber but kind of regressing at the same time because he went from like actual commentating videos to just like really quick uh, just snarky tiktok drama videos and also i feel like his attention is mostly now towards dev lemons and just the stuff the projects that he's doing with dev lemons and like the music and like the touring and he's making videos while he's on tour blah 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 blah. then also i just think like ethan is kind of in the same boat um i feel like a lot of people are hating ethan and nick right now i feel like it's kind of like this bandwagon kind of thing that's going on right now with these two commentary youtubers and i feel like a lot of people are just not having it especially with nick's most recent vi video about like mr beast or whatever and people are just this is the most like negative comments i've seen on nick's channel like, ever before and i had been sub to him since like he only had like 50k subscribers i think so um, it's really interesting to see this amount of very critical comments on his videos and something that was also brought up um was the thing with curtis connor and i seen a few comments on the last video talking about it the controversy that he has with dean so someone commented i hope this situation makes people remember that curtis is bfs with a racist misogynist and still publicly supports and platforms him and that nick is also friends with him and has made videos with him specifically a video where they made fun of some dude's apology for being racist like come on the irony is 
is crazy and i believe there was another comment that was also like oh so he's in the same realm as curtis connor obviously curtis connor is like the biggest channel of these kind of commentary youtubers and i remember when nick is not green and curtis connor first made a collab video i was like so excited because they're like two of my most favorite youtubers but apparently the thing is is that curtis connor has platform dean which has he has been basically caught in like blackface and a history of misogyny and very racist like kind of rhetoric and i found it on a reddit thread where like Curtis actually addressed it in a reddit post which was like titled something along the lines of like curtis connor read dean you know and um curtis connor actually responded so obviously this is really concerning that there's this kind of like pattern of behavior in like the commentary community especially with like the more like leftist wing commentators you know it's not really a good look especially like with the beliefs that leftists have and like it's just it's just kind of ironic so um there's a tiktoker that literally talked about the situation about Curtis connor this is dean hebsher this is also dean hebsher and this guy right here in the middle is dean hebsher again no, your eyes do not deceive you. Dean is white, as far as I can tell. He's not black, and he is participating in the vile act of blackface. If you've heard of Dean before, chances are you've also heard of Curtis Connor. Um, if you have heard of neither of them, uh, I don't really know what you're doing here, but um, Curtis is a pretty prominent YouTuber. He's got millions of subscribers, um, pretty internet famous, I suppose. Um, and he is best friends with Dean. Uh, Dean has been in a couple of his videos. He's taken Dean on tour with him where Dean performs um, his own comedy sets, um, which I have heard are not funny. <laughs> I'm bringing Curtis up because the entire reason that Dean has a following at all, however small it may be compared to Curtis, um, it's because of Curtis. Um, he has platformed him multiple times and, um, again, brought him on a tour with him. Now, Curtis Connor's brand um, is pretty much a, a progressive man. Um, he is a feminist. He is an ally. Um, it's a safe space in his videos, uh, no matter what your gender or race or what you identify as. Around the time um, they filmed the Bestie Picks Bay video with Seventeen, um, these tweets surfaced. Um, the Bestie Picks Bay thing was a whole different situation. That was kind of weird. Um, didn't make Dean look the greatest, but um, that's kind of small compared to this. Here are some more tweets. Um, pause if you would like to um, subject your eyes to that. Good reading material. Here are some more. And my personal favorite. You'll notice that um, this tweet is from 2013. Uh, Dean, in his uh, apology on Twitter, said that uh, the blackface happened in 2014. Now, I know this seems like a lot of backstory, but I'm getting to it. Um, around that time that these tweets surfaced, um, this is what Curtis had to say about it. This was a comment on a Reddit thread about um, Dean being problematic and discussing that. Um, now, uh, what jumps out to me here is um, that he's seen his growth firsthand, blah, blah, blah. Um, I am sorry, Curtis. I'm sure that before, like, the YouTube fame or whatever, Dean was his authentic, genuine self in front of you. But now, especially, he is not going to be misbehaving in front of his most famous friend. That is the whole reason he has a platform in the first place. I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, another thing that Curtis says is, uh, if you don't like the guy, then just don't watch his content. It's that easy. I would love to never see Dean's little face again, uh, honestly. But unfortunately, uh, Curtis, you did post videos with him. And again, you did bring him on your tour, giving him a platform. So I can't just not watch his content because I'm watching your content. This is a screen grab from his video apology that he posted on Twitter. Um, I can't figure out how to get the video um, on my phone and onto TikTok because I'm a millennial. Um, but the gist of it, uh, he said that um, it was in the name of 
authenticity of his costume. Um, he wanted to be as authentic as possible. Uh, and he said he was uneducated, uh, didn't know better, basically. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you did know better um, and that you just wanted to be edgy and funny. Um, that's just my theory, though. You'll notice right here, not a lot of engagement, not really reaching a lot of eyes, ears, and souls, um, this apology. And Curtis Connor, his best friend, has defended him and continued to platform him. He has not said a thing on this. And I am willing to bet that his subscribers and followers would be disgusted if they knew that Curtis was still associating with Dean. I consider myself a fan of Curtis Connor, you know, a citizen of Curtis Town. Um, and I am very disappointed that Curtis has not said anything about this. Um, I do think that he's seen it though, because the videos that he did have with Dean on his channel have since been deleted. It's just discouraging seeing a creator that you believed had good values associate with someone like this and continue to associate with them through those tweets through the blackface they were friends through it and curtis hasn't said a thing on any of his platforms curtis you're probably never going to see this but i was a fan i urge you to say something anything on any platform about this because you are the reason he has a following you have platformed him Just the fact that you are not saying anything is extremely disappointing, um, considering what your personality is like in your videos. Um, and if Dean is like this in on the internet, how was he in private? Because that's crazy. Do you actually believe all the things that you say, Curtis? Or... Is it just marketing to an audience that you know will eat it up? Because I'm not sure. I'm just disappointed. And Dean, if you see this, um, there's a reason that your friend Curtis and um, also Jacob Sharp, who has a bigger following than Dean, um, are bigger than you. Uh, because at least they portray themselves to be nice. And your sense of humor is not funny. Uh, it wasn't funny back then. And it's not funny now, however much you've cleaned it up since then. Um, you're just kind of a jerk. So, just thought I would let the people know. Um, nobody's probably going to see this. But um, I thought that it would be good to get the word out there. So, Curtis's followers know who he is associating himself with. And anyone that follows Dean that hasn't seen this yet, now you know. And said that like his best friend Dean Hepsher says that no, your eyes do not deceive you. Seaburn says Dean is white as far as I can tell. He's not black and he's participating in the vile act of blackface. So um, the reason that this TikToker is bringing up Hepsher's history of blackface is because she said Connor has appeared with Hepsher on his channel. He's taken Dean on tour with him where Dean performs his own comedy sets, which I have heard are not funny. The TikToker says she continues, I'm bringing Curtis up because the entire reason that Dean has a following at at all however small it may be compared to curtis it's because of curtis he has platformed him multiple times and again brought him on a tour with him and now i'm a very big fan of curtis connor so everything that i'm saying and the reason why i was making these videos in the first place was coming from a place of a concerned fan and i just think that think it's important to talk about it about people that i actually looked up to and that inspired me to make videos in the first place so it says in an ex post on october 13th dean acknowledged the photos quote as many of you already know there are some photos that have resurfaced of me in blackface from a halloween party in the year 2014. hebsher said in the video quote my intentions at the time were in the nature of trying to have the most authentic costume possible but clearly i was displaying derogatory behavior and was incredibly uneducated this is something i will regret for the rest of my life because it's nothing but racist black people are not a novelty they're not costumes they're not characters they are human beings that was from a place i mean that was from a year the year of 2014 
15 and he said he wanted to do the video because quote it's only right i've had so many lapses in judgment that have hurt so many people that have hurt so many people and left so many people offended like obviously they're offended like dude come on Seabren shows some examples of those lapses in the form of ex post which includes sexist racist homophobic and misogynistic language so the thing that i feel like is that i do think people can change i do think that again back then there was a lot of things that were completely normalized and just like no one really talked about it the way that we talk about it now nobody was like thought it was wrong obviously during this time how many youtubers have like literally been exposed for this kind of behavior i like growing up like that was kind of the thing that was normalized and what i saw on the internet and what i even saw on tv what some people at school would be saying or doing and not to say that like that kind of like um behavior is like right or anything but i just feel like when people i feel like people can change and you can only tell if someone's changed due due to time time passing and if their actions have changed because people can say that they've changed but obviously have not done anything in response to the criticisms that they're facing and rightfully so and just continue to do the same thing you know what i mean um so this is a tiktoker then references a reddit post so this is the reddit post that i was talking about earlier um from two years ago in which a user asked quote relationship but deemed problematic in the comments you slash curtis connor replied quote i've already addressed this a bunch of times but i'll do it again because i would like to stick up for my friend if he was really if he really was as bad as some people on the internet say he is then i'd simply not be his friend you know also he did a apologized tons of times and has grown a lot over the past few years and i've literally seen it firsthand that whole situation a few years ago was full of weird stuff that went on behind behind the scenes and we've all just been trying to move on from it for years now i understand your concern and i appreciate you but honestly if you don't like the guy then just don't watch his content and it's that easy and it says quote i would love to never see dean's little face again but unfortunately curtis you did post videos with him and again you did bring him on your tour giving him a platform seaburn says which is the tiktoker that is making these responses in videos seaburn continues um curtis his best friend has defended him and continued to platform him he has not said a thing on this and i'm willing to bet that his subscribers and followers would be disgusted if they knew that curtis was still associating with dean tiktoker notes that she considers her herself a fan of connor quote i am very disappointed that curtis has not said anything about this i do think that he's seen it though because the videos that he did have with dean on his channel have since been deleted it's just discouraging seeing a creator that you believe had good values associated with someone like this and continue to associate with them through those tweets through the blackface they were friends through it and curtis hasn't said a thing on any of his platforms she concludes curtis you probably never are going to see this but as a fan i urge you to say something anything on any platform about this because you are the reason he has a following you have platformed him just the fact that you are not saying anything is extremely disappointing considering what your personality is like in your videos which i I do agree with that Curtis is very forward and humor that's a little more digestible and stuff like that. Um, it says, do you actually believe all the things that you say, Curtis, or is it just marketing to an audience that you know will eat it up? Because I'm not sure. I'm just disappointed. In the comments, users weighed in on the situation. Quote, I remember Dean getting exposed years like years ago, and I've always wondered why everyone just forgot. Wrote, one user. Another user wrote, I thought Curtis deleted all the vids with Dean and didn't collab with him anymore. A third user wrote, I've been saying this for years. No one has been listening to me in all caps. The Daily Dot reached out to Seabren via TikTok direct message and Connor and Heb show via email for a comment. Update on October 20th. Um, quote, I'm so surprised it got as big as it did. This is the first social media post I have gotten that's gotten more than 50 likes. LOL. It feels surreal having so many people agreeing and thanking me for it. Okay, that kind of feels weird to me that they're like, this is the first one that's gotten more than 50 likes. Like, I don't know. There's kind of feels weird to me because it's like if your if your main concern was bringing this to light like why would you bring up the light count like does anyone else find that weird maybe i'm reaching but i don't know that just seems a little weird to me like i wouldn't bring up the light count if it was something that i actually cared about or was like disappointed about anyways it feels surreal having so many people agreeing and thanking me for bringing this to light i'm sad i had to share the news but i am glad and i can bring in so many fans of curtis's attention um it felt 
important to share and that's what they told the daily doc so i feel like the whole situation with the commentary youtubers obviously i feel like a lot of people are discussing it because that's just kind of how the youtube commentary algorithm works is like you get to like shit on people so you get more people to shit on them so you have like a collective goal of like shitting on one person that's like just like basically what i feel like happens and it's kind of like disguised as this like justice or like kind of like heroic kind of thing like we're taking down bad people but it's like i don't know if you can really like trust anyone on the commentary sphere like everyone has a past everyone has done something fucked up i don't care who you are you can be jenna marbles like you have done something that has hurt someone we've come to a point where it's like do we accept the fact that these people have done what they did and do we still give them a platform do we still forgive them because if it was you you watching this would you want people to give you a chance or to see past your mistakes now give and take that obviously doesn't apply to like murder or sa or physically harming someone don't take that out of context i do not say that i'm saying things like this that fall into more drama but shouldn't even though it has to do with lex's sa but nick has turned it into something that it wasn't ever supposed to be according to him too that it was supposed to amplify lex's voice because it's hard for people to pay attention or believe someone especially when it's women talking about their sa and especially against people that are well-known youtubers so i think like the whole situation has very nuanced things to look at i don't think it's like this whole it's not a very good situation i would say i personally just don't i want to do videos that aren't like drama related even though i've like made videos about certain topics and things like that but i don't know like it's kind of hard to navigate especially as like youtubers and stuff because it's like there are so many people that are like clout chasing which is kind of like the whole point of like being a youtuber like i don't know like people are gonna say like it's not it's about content creation no it's about clout chasing and it's about getting a following it's about having people blindly follow you it's about having this cult following so you can get the sponsorship so you can get the youtube adsense like i don't know i'm just gonna put that out there like just being being honest like even with talking the situation like obviously it's like kind of a trending topic right now and i'm kind of like hesitant to even like put out this video that it kind of sucks that these people who kind of deceived i don't know deceived is such like a dramatic word but like deceived people like me who was a fan of niggas not green and ethan because they were like these feminist guys that just like understood and understood that they're like in the place of privilege because ethan's literally white uh nick is literally a wait he's a straight cis man right correct me if i'm wrong but they have like they're in the place of privilege like they're literally youtubers they do this for a living like i just think like overall i feel like there's like the fall of like youtubers especially with like the commentary channels like i feel like it's gonna kind of be like the makeup guru kind of youtube how it kind of just like dissipated and isn't as like strong anymore because it had all these like literal like drama get in and shit like that so i feel like that's kind of what the commentary is gonna like be steering towards and i feel like now it's more of like think pieces and video essayist and um there is like another term for it but i do feel like nick did address it and i feel like we we have to decide whether or not we find his apology and his address addressing what had happened um i don't even really think he said sorry he didn't say sorry for um bringing up their um deceased friend you know like what did that have to do with any of the things that were going on but like i feel like things are cracking and things are showing and i'm really really uh on the fence again about like curtis connor and dean you know and it comes to the point where it's like do your friends reflect you and your values do your friends reflect who you are as a person and i think thought that's true to an extent because it's like you can be friends with people that you disagree with you get what i'm saying like i don't agree with some of the views that my friends have but we're still friends you know so it's like i like having friends that are different from me but obviously we have like commonality and something but there's we're not going to be thinking the same not going to be having the same everything because i feel like that kind of just 
defeats the purpose of having friends because I feel like having friends that are different helps you grow as a person and helps you like be exposed to different perspectives so it just comes to a question of like are we going to are we going to de-platform Curtis I don't want to say cancel Curtis because I just I don't know I don't know about that but like are we gonna de-platform Curtis for the actions of his friend in 2014 obviously Curtis has been feeling the the heat you know it's getting a little hot in here so he's deleted like the videos with dean and he has since has not said anything about nick which is also another person he has collabed with obviously and has not said anything about it so i just think like the dynamic probably between curtis and nick is a little different because i feel like nick isn't really like curtis's best friend but dean is like considered his like best friend to the point where he bought him on tour you know uh, so let me know what you guys think i don't know how the situation can progress i think it's i think it is what it is at this point the only thing i think that can progress is if Curtis actually discusses and talks about the things that have been happening and the things that this one TikToker like you know brought up once again because this has been like brought up like maybe like two years ago so maybe like in 2020 2021 as far as what I've read but then someone has brought it up and then that also kind of like bothers me too it's like people bring up things you know that were already like dead and you don't what do you call it like have already been discussed and have already been addressed by the person who is being accused of a b and c so like curtis responded to that reddit thread and literally responded about it but obviously people are like just talk about it so i'm hoping that curtis will talk about it i have a feeling that he will i'm really hoping that he will because it will be disappointing again but let me know what you guys think in the comments um make sure you like and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time bye you didn't feel it when you kissed me Why you got red cheeks and hot wine